We live. Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Beer Analysis 101. Your host, Maxwell Star. We got some technical difficulties fixed and we are able to go live. Sorry for being seven minutes late, but you're probably used to it by now. Highly. You're, you're, uh, not, sorry. you're not, sorry. not sorry. Not sorry. Anyway, tonight's beer, we're going to do uh, technically Christmas beer. Oh, fuck it. We're just going to drink it anyway. We're going to do uh, a classic. <laughs> this is Chimay Blue or Grand Reserve, 9% ABV. First and foremost, let's get down to the panel that we have with us tonight, and we've already had introduction to the first one, so let's go with them. Beer Nomicron, Mr. Radar himself. How are you doing? Vincent? Good evening, boys and girls. I am Radar. That's R-A slash D-H slash A-R, or apostrophe, sorry, uh, from the beer, beer channel Beer Nomicron. For are you not going to do your whole spiel where you're like uh, on drinking in Canada and all that crap? Uh, well, I'm the one uh, known as former former alcoholic radar on uh, drinking in Canada channel with uh, Guy, who's unfortunately not here. Alcoholic, alcoholic Guy. Anyway, all right. So, alcoholic Guy. <laughs> all right. Anyway, moving right along to uh, Mr. Ashley Sexton, Sexton Brewing Co. How are you doing tonight, sir? Doing great. Thank you. Just doing fantastic. I got nothing. It was, it was a pretty whole hum day, so there we go. Ah, the life of retail. You got it, my friend. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, next up, we got Mr. Greg of Nothing Important, except for maybe that uh, Jacket Review channel that got infiltrated by the Jacket Airbus. Reviews and Arnold Reviews. We're going to review you, Arnold. And I have the unfortunate position of coming up right behind Ashy Sexton, so... Yeah. You go, never you gonna go. be pretty. Oh, my dog's gonna have oh, you. got a big Arnold's bowl there, eh? Jesus. Yes. Yes. <gasps> okay, and Mr. Ken Beer Reviews, Mr. Craig. Hi. Nice to see you, man. How are you doing? Yeah, we're good. Good. Cheers for having me. Uh, sorry, a bit late, but yeah, All right, that's fine. Dumb ass computer, but there you go. It's just one of them things, but yeah, yeah. Wanted to, wanted to do this one again. Um, yeah, a classic. Yep. See what happens? Your computers get crappy after Brexit. Oh, God. Yeah, the internet connection. Uh, my, my, computer's always, a... my computer's always been crappy. So. <laughs> they had to put a border checkpoint so, on your internet connection, yeah, right? That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so moving right along, let's go over to the uh, beer history. For me, by the way, I'm doing fine. Uh, I got some news to share with you. I'll do that in the after chat. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, it's great. Moving on. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay, so uh, the story is Shimei. This is pretty much going to be a rehash of the we did a couple of weeks ago. We've been here. But the story of Shimei starts with the monks of Scourmont Abbey, uh, the Trappist Order inhabiting the Abbey of Notre Dame de Scourmont, located on the Scourmont Plateau in the Belgian province of Hainaut, uh, near the Ardennes Forest. The Abbey was founded in 1844 by monks from the West Flutter and Abbey with the support of Prince Joseph II of Shimei. Um, Following the establishment of the monastery, self-sufficient monks built a farm, began to produce cheese, and started a brewery for their own sustenance as part of the Trappist way of life. Originally, the beer was produced only for the monks and their guests. In 1862, they became the first Trappist brewery to sell their beers to the public. The first beer sold to the public was a Bavarian-style Doppelbach, but was determined to be too low of fermentation. Monks re reached out to West Flutter for advice, and in doing so, created the predecessor to, uh, to what is today known as Chimay Premier, the red one. Um, during the interwar period in the 1920s and 30s, Chimay's beers became the first to coin the term Trappist beer. Uh, during World War II, breweries was destroyed and Germans used the monastery as barracks. Following the war, brewery was rebuilt and a monk by the name of Father Theodore began work at the brewery. And in the, the winter of 1948, studying the work of famed brewing scientist Jean de Clerc, Father Theodore began cultivating a new yeast strain that would he help improve the quality of the, uh, the beer that the brewery produced. By the 1950s, Father Diodor invited de Klerk himself to the Abbey with the help of perfecting Chimay's production methods. De Klerk, who had previously gained fame for isolating the yeast strain found in Duval, and actually talked about him during the Duval uh, Beer Analysis 101, um, yeah, found the monastery, and none of the monks there were formally trained in the industry. So he arranged that Father Diodor take his course in Louvain, uh, which is France, I think? I might be wrong on that. Um, as a byproduct of this, Father Theodore and de Klerk worked together to create Chimay Blue Cap, or Grand Reserve. 
1956, the beer that set Chimay on its course to international fame. When de Klerk passed away in 1978, he was buried at the Scaramon Abbey, an honor traditionally only given to the resident monks. In 1966, Father Theodore brewed the, a lighter, drier, hoppier triple, hoppier triple called Saint Song or 500, to celebrate the 500th anniversary of the Principality of Chimay, whose support made the brewery and abbey possible. Oh, the theater continued to work at the brewery well into his 90s, passing away in 2013. And of course, at uh, 1997, Chimay was one of the eight founding Trappist abbeys from the international to form the International Trappist Association, prevent non Trappist companies from using the Trappist name for commercial use. The International Trappist Association created a logo, which is placed on all bottles. You can see it right there on the little hexagon there. Um, uh, that it was placed on all their goods, cheese, beer, wine, etc., conform to the criteria that a trap is to be a tra required to be a Trappist product. These criteria are as follows: beer must be brewed within the abbey walls, either by the monks or under their supervision. Uh, the brewery may uh, must be of secondary importance within the monastery and should witness the business, the practices, the pro proper to a monastic way of life. So it can't be their top priority, obviously. And, of course, the brewery is a non-profit venture. Uh, income for the products made or cover the monks' living expenses and upkeep, and the rest is donated to charity. Uh, in 2013, Chimay Dor, uh, the gold, was uh, 4.8 Patters beer, long brewed the brewery for the monks and staff. Only a sustenance was finally made available to the public. Got a bottle of it back. I should have brought it. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, so Grand Reserve is a 9% ABV. Belgian Strong Dark Ale, 35 IBUs. Um, first brewed in 1956 as a Christmas beer. It has gone on to become one of the most well-known beers and considered to be the classic Chimay. Spiked with candy, sugar, and yeast when bottled for secondary fermentation. Um, to Chimay Blue is well-known as a beer that can be cellared for years. And in fact, I'm sitting right next to a 2015 bottle of it. So, um, my, this one's a 18 and the other one's a 15. So they, they last for a long time. All anyway, right. Uh, without moving, without further ado, let's get on to some comments, and uh, I'm gonna draft Ashley, if I may. Sure. So we got Lee in the channel. He was uh, mentioning he's getting blue balls waiting on this video production. He got really excited, maybe a little too excited. Uh, he's gonna be confused. Like, what? Radar has the beer. Also breaking the non-on-camera rule for the show. Well, well, we'll take what we can get. Mm -hmm. uh, Redbeard is in the chat. He says, "What be going down?" And according to Lee, his popularity, Rib, rib Weird, that's what's going down. Wow. That's, and that's what we got. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and that that one actually made me chuckle a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I love your response, Lamau. Burn. <laughs> burn. <laughs> oh, burn. Feel the burn. <laughs> Um, All right, great. so I can, uh, I, I can hear Redbeard too as, as he read that. He's like, <laughs> they just hear him all the way from North Bay. Oh, shit. Shit's getting real, son. But now it's too late for him to do a response that's witty because it's taken too long. He's obviously thought about it. So he just sort of has to sit there and look at that comment from Lee and just sort of <laughs> sulk through it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that up there. Actually, yeah. you know, what? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put Lee's comment up here yeah. for now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we do well. We huh. give her a little bit of bits of history on these beers here. So, uh, moving right along, let's go back over to uh, the beer Nomicron. Yeah. All right. What's what's your history with Chimay Blue, or do you have any? I don't. I don't even recall seeing the name. To be honest with you, As, uh, this is the first time seeing this beer, seeing this uh, beer, this brewery uh, at all. So uh, I'm quite looking forward to tasting it, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, don't, I haven't drank a very many Belgian beers, to be honest with you. So looking forward to it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome, thanks. Very nice. All right, let's move on to Ash Nomicron Sex Nomicron. Ash Lexicron Sex Nomicron. I uh, yeah. I probably first had this beer years ago when I was doing like. When I was collecting beer glasses, and this was like sort of in like a uh, the Chimay glass with I, I think they probably had the blue and the red in there. I, I don't know what else. Um, so probably way back, like probably know, the five, white. Probably, you can only get the white, the red. And yeah. The, uh, thank blue. you. I was I was trying to think what it was because it wasn't the gold because that was just released. Yeah. Um. So 
Uh, I last uh, tapped this one in 2017, but I mean, over the course of the year, I'll probably have like four or five of these. You know, it's just, you know, one of those old, reliable, great quality beers that you can just sort of forget about and then just sort of rediscover. And again, I think I've mentioned this many times, you know, with these types of beers, you sort of wonder why you don't drink it more often. So, uh, so yeah, a good history. I mean, not, not crazy, but I mean, I've, I've had it quite a few times. Cool story, bro. Cool story, bro. Greg, <laughs> what's your history with Chimay Blue? Well, my Chimay Blue history begins way, way back in the days of January 8th, 2015. When shock, you may all may be shocked, I was in the middle of a three way between Chimay Blue, uh, St. Bernardus, App. 12 and rush for 10 and it lost the three-way oh now we're saying three -way. this one actually lost the three-way uh so that was the first time i've had it i this is one of those things i buy i don't know if i buy it every year but i probably i mean it's cheap enough that i buy a bottle on a somewhat regular basis if not every year than every couple years it's uh it's a staple and i like like, like belgian beers it's always a good value but it's I can't say anymore because it might be a spoiler. Yeah, there you go. Do you mean All a right. spoiler? The spoiler behind your Camaro? He doesn't have it a spoiler. A, it does. Well, have a spoiler. It's a very it's small spoiler. Lip or but something, it is, right? there, there is a spoiler. I think it's actually useful. It's actually a useful spoiler too because it's rear wheel drive, isn't it? It is. It is. By the way, if anyone has a spoiler on a front wheel drive car, it actually makes you go smaller. But nobody gives a shit because this isn't a car show. So it looks cool, right? Sure, why not? Yeah, all right. Another cool story, bro. Yeah, and those NOS stickers that give uh, about 20 more horsepower. Oh, yeah, yeah, those work. <laughs> all right. Boring ashy, cars are transportation, that's it. For two all, right. Things. No of, uh, all right, so let's go over to Mr. Craig and see what his history is. Oh, I even see he's got proper glassware, so you must have a significant history. Hashtag. Um... I've got a long history of this beer. Uh, not this one, but others. Um, about 20 years before we first tried this. Yeah, around about 2000-ish time when I first started getting into Belgian beers. Like the the classic ones, this is one of them. Um, yeah, maybe it's just... Uh, is it, uh, although I left it alone for probably a good eight, nine years and then started coming back to it during sort of 2014 onwards um drinking it a lot since i've been going out to madeira the last four years five years it's regularly available in all the bars out there in portugal along with a lot of other kind of belgian beers and and like regular german stuff um so yeah and get to get this regularly down down my way um there's a bar that, that serves this and about i say about 200 other belgian beers um, so yeah, it's just one of them, one of them cracking, cracking beers that you, uh, start your day, sup, sup on, that's it, my history. Very nice. All right. Wow. Okay. Um, sorry, I was drinking the beer. Uh, yeah, my history with this beer is that, uh, first time I ever had it, like I got turned on to this beer because it used to they used to carry it in uh, the NSL season in Nova Scotia. And when I first started my beer beer review channel uh, way back in early 20, 2011, um, it was kind of on the heels of a trip to Nova Scotia that I went down went down to my grandmother's funeral, bought a whole bunch of beers back, and figured it was the best time as any to do start doing a beer review channel. And one of the beers that I picked up was something that was actually uh, put on to me because at the time, Lee, uh, on his old beer tube channel, and I'm sorry I bring this up, Lee, but he used to have a beer tube channel. Uh, he still do, but okay, I'm digging myself deeper anyway. What, I, what I'm trying to say is that uh, he did like a cellaring project back then, and it got turned on to that beer because like, okay, that beer looks fucking amazing when he drank it. So I decided to pick it up, and it was really expensive at the time like it was like a 750 mil bomber bottle and it was 10 bucks which was unheard of or 10 or 11 bucks or something like that for a beer back in 2011 which seemed absurd nowadays it's nothing people will buy 15 uh, barrel aged beers for 
But they're batting an eye, but I don't think it was a ten dollar beer just seemed crazy back then. Um anyway, uh long story short, I reviewed it on my channel when I when I was first starting out as review number one hundred. So it was like a very significant beer for me. Um and of course I really liked it at the time. At the time it was like the best beer I'd ever drank, but uh, that's not saying much because that was like way back when uh, uh, number 100. I've had it numerous times since. Um, like I mentioned, these bottles I've got, I got an 18 and I got a uh, 20 or 15, and I bought these when they were fresh. So it's it's been a beer that I've I've turned to multiple times over. I've drank Celerate's beers. I think even might have been like review number when I did my one year anniversary on the channel. I even did a well, like a one or two year barrel. Uh, uh, aged bottle or something anyway i took it seriously back when it was out and i i haven't drank a lot of it since but it's still a classic and still one that i like like drinking every once in a while because i mean i'm getting down in numbers of these but these 2015s have just been one that like every once in a while i'll pluck one into the cellar and do it like i think if, uh, i think i last time i drank one of these was i did a i was on like joe's channel or something back when joe was still alive yeah. with us, you know <laughs> Yeah, I was with you that night. Oh yeah, yeah, we done that. Let's remember the last time done it this online for sure. Nice. All right. Well, I'm nice bloke he was. Rest in peace, Joe. He was. He's a nice bloke. Yeah, listen. He was a nice bloke. So let's turn it over to the oh, new oh, comment. He would have survived average if he wore Joe? a uniform. Wait, average Joe's dead. Yep. No, he's not really. Uh, good, good. Just, no, he is. Paul's wearing he's skin. dead. He's dead. He's dead. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's. It's actually Paul wearing Joe's <laughs> face. Why? We haven't seen Joe in a while. We haven't seen happened? Joe since the um, the the Matt's barbecue beer, beer tuber Palooza back in August of last year. So, I mean, he's been on uh, like on chats and everything, but the only thing he's done is post beer, beer reviews, which could have been scheduled before Paul ate his face. You know. Man, that dude had like a thousand beer reviews in the queue. Backlog. Um, chat uh, in the chat. There's uh, not much else going on other than uh, Lee reaffirming our suspicion, uh, not to pretend that uh, uh, Redbeard would have been able to come up with anything witty in response, anyways. So, um, yeah, that, that's the chat. We got four people watching. So, hello, viewers. Or viewer. Viewer. Hi, viewer. Oh, viewer. Viewer. <laughs> viewer. Uh, viewer. Viewer could have got this beer. Although you probably think that you know it's it's so mainstream now that it's mundane or something. I don't know where I'm going with this. Ew, my shirt wet. Yeah, I gotta say that I'm really enjoying the side by side comparison of the fifth of the eighteen and the fifteen. And not just because I'm uh, double fisting nine percent beers. But this is actually I got ninety percent beer. Is that what I heard? I got ninety percent beer. I'm only gonna drink three beers tonight. Two nine percent and a and a ten percent behind me. So <laughs> just All say right, it. Rook. It's Rook. Right. Rook. 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 I'm calling sick if I have to. Three reasons. <laughs> so. uh yeah, that was it for uh, for uh, comments. So, go into the uh, analysis portion of the show. Well, we can go in all those things just to get it over with. Um, Radar, are you ready? Get it over it? with, like this is a chore. <laughs> Nick, you got to enjoy the anal, not try and get. Well, that's it. it. I mean, I'm I'm just sort of sitting down and sipping the beer, and I'm always the last one to talk. So I'm like. This is, you go read some comments and I'll come up with some thoughts on this thing. I, and now it's I, just I'd like, love to read some comments, but uh, there's no comments. Anyway, Lee wants to say something else. Funny. Yeah, burn Redbeard again. Redbeard hasn't talked. So maybe he shut the feet off after he. Uh, burn. We I mean, he may have been killed in that Chinese grease fire. Quite anyway. Positive. All right, so maybe no, we should go. Let's go into the after chat, the after talk here, uh, the, the 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 feedback. One for a while, break. Oh, uh, all right. No, we are. All right. So, give me what's your what's your final opinion? What's your what's your thoughts on this beer? And then uh, rate it uh, out of ten for both the style and for the overall enjoyment. Um. Well, I took a sip. Uh, 
first one was okay, and the second one made it taste even better. That's how I feel. Uh, the, it, it was, um, I'd say, overall, like the, the style of it, like the bottle and like the logo and everything, I give it a good nine because that's pretty much what European beers look like to me. And that's, to me, that's like, it looks like a high class, good company and good beer. The taste of it, I think, was really good as well, or two. I'd say, how can I describe it? That a, 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 like the, the mouth feels like it's like Cody, like a coat in the, it's like it's like a coat in your mouth. Uh, it's like there's a little bit of bitter, bitterness at the back, in the back, and light fruity. I'd say. I don't know exactly which fruit, but I taste a little bit of spices as well. I'd say. Um, yeah, it for for a dark beer, I, I like it. I'm not really a fan of European beers, but this to me, for a strong one, is actually pretty good. When it to taste and overall, I'd say eight point six five. It's very good. Nice. And. So uh, Definitely worth the price, I think, because it was, uh, you know, these uh, these monks were doing God's work. I guess that's, that's making beer. <laughs> 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 and this was only for the monks, like you said, for a while, right? It's like, oh, it's only for us to get drunk. <laughs> right? I think this so, was I wonder, I wonder if bigger into like a celebration like, beer for, <laughs> not, like, I, I think public sale might have been considered in mind, but yeah, like, yeah, usually they like leave these things for. Sausage. If I'd be a monk in southern Belgium drinking a bunch of things, I'd probably feel like going to. I'd probably invade Luxembourg right after that. You know, <laughs> I would feel like yeah, I'm there. Luxembourg. I mean, Luxembourg. Well, Luxembourg is only about Luxembourg. three kilometers away, so let's go invade Luxembourg. If, after you get drunk on this beer, let's go invade Luxembourg. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow, nice. Well played. Oh, and one th uh, another thing, it's uh, it's not Shimei, it's Jimei. Oh, the way you say it in their language, Shimei. I don't care. Not Shimei. Right. No, right. you know, like S-H-E and then M-A-Y, Shimei. Shimei. Nick is set in his ways. Yeah, all right, so let's go over to uh, uh, follow follow up uh, radars. Uh, you have to follow somebody else up this time. Yeah, I guess so, right? Oh, shit. Um. So, it, just as a point of reference, Radar and I, we have the exact same uh, a, or a dated bottle. This is a 10 2024. So, this is pretty fresh. Me too. Um, this, yeah. Oh, okay. So, there we go. Point of reference. And I also had mine sitting out for about an hour and a, an hour and a bit. So, when it was poured, it was maybe just a, just a tight, uh, a tight, a touch chilled. Um, <laughs> There we go. It's gonna be a long day. So we all had the same one. It probably came on the same uh, Belgian galleon. The guy, yeah. Uh, they, they just they just uh, shipped that right over on a big wooden boat. Um, well, it's not really big. It's about fifty feet long, but whatever. Well, whatever. We're just splitting the hairs, right? Um, yeah, this is a great beer. Um, the I, I I didn't even prepare anything. I'm sorry. Uh, on the nose. Um, getting uh, yeah, the nose and the, and the flavor are very similar in that you, you're getting a lot of like dark stone fruit, like prune and plum. Uh, get a little bit of uh, a malt characteristic, like uh, a nice rich um, toasty bread type of malt characteristic to it. Um, on the sip, uh, I get a lot of the similar aromas that translate into the flavor i do pick up a touch of like a bubble gum uh, to it but it's it's very slight and it's probably just because of the freshness of this um it's, it's a yeast phenol that's pretty uh, obvious since it's a pretty new bottle uh i get a slight char to it as well uh not like a heavy char or anything like that but just a little bit there that lets you know that there's like a, a dark malt presence to it um the hold on 
Um, warmed up, this is very smooth. Normally, I, I find a lot of bottle conditioned Belgian beers is they're very spritzy and very active on the carbon uh, uh, on the palate. Uh, like the the carbonation is pretty aggressive, but I find this one since it's warmed up and it's been you know out of the bottle for a while, it's nice and smooth. Um, coats the palate nicely. It's still relatively light body though. It's 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 not a heavy beer uh, for being nine percent, so it's a little deceptive in that regard. Uh, much like most of these Belgian style beers, which is like Delirium as well, they're very dangerous, you know, because you can just easily plow through this with no problem. Uh, the nine percent alcohol is so well hidden; um, it's like non-existent. Um, to me, this is just a beautiful beer, you know, uh, no faults, no nothing at all. You, you, I drink this any, any day and not complain about it whatsoever. Um, I don't know if I'd be, uh, double fisting it there, Nick, but, uh, <laughs> but that, that's on you and yeah, uh, it, we all know how the night's going to go. So, um, but I mean, really for a Belgian strong, dark ale, I mean, for style, I, I don't know how you. Like for me, I'm gonna give it a nine and a half out of ten. I mean, it's it's exactly what it's supposed to be. They, they, you know, this is probably one of the originators, if not, I don't, you know. And uh, for personal preference, I will give it an eight and a half for personal preference. Yeah, there we go. All right, eight point five. All right, let's go over to Mr. Greg, who has to follow all that up. Nick's so drunk from the double fisting, he's going to let me anal on camera. I'm also. Are you, are you double fisting? Okay. I'm also double fisting, and I'm, all, I'm also. Oh, sorry, you got like an 18 or a 19 and a, a 16, don't you? Is that I what you got? I have a. Uh, so it's December 16. My dog's going nuts, so. Sorry. Right. Deal with it. And uh, then I've got the same bottle as Ashley and Radar. So I've so got the, the 2019. 10, 10, Super fresh. Um, so I'll give a quick blurb about the, I'm not going to rate the age one per se, at least not efficient. Okay. Um, so it's a lot stronger. Uh, I, I get just a ton of chocolate from this one, but it's like, I actually actually put it really well. It's like the char, the char that Ashley gets from the more uh, fresher one. I almost get that. It's almost like they burnt the chocolate. They, it's almost like a that dessert where they burn it. But it's not sweet. It's, uh, well, I guess it's a little sweet. Uh, yeah, it's like a burnt chocolate. It's not bad, but I do feel I like the fresh ones better, which tends to be my thing with pretty much all these Belgian beers is that they age well, they change. They don't, to me, get better. I, I feel that they... They don't really get worse either. They get different. But I, that being said, I do prefer the uh, the fresher one. So the fresher one, which is at this point six months old anyway, uh, or close to it. Um, right, what is it? No, it's not. I don't know how to do math. It's four months old. Uh, my big thing with it, everything about it is muted. I've got the I've got the, the candy sugar. I got the banana. I got a little. Oh, it's gonna get a red rocket. This oh God, get, he is too. Get... He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Beer Analysis like 101. We are always professional here. <laughs> Apparently the dog is caught double fish connect too. Oh, shit. This is going to be the perfect Jamie gift, too. <laughs> yeah. <gonna> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Jamie, Jamie, please. Please, Jamie. Please, please make a gift out of this. I got to go feed. Oh god. It's not even his fault. My wife's wearing a see-through shirt and he's getting horny and taking it out on me. Oh yeah, like he's never done that to you. <laughs> oh, only when he's horny for you, but then I'm just easier to access. Okay. All right. Let's move along, Greg. What was your what's your final yeah, thoughts? Okay. So, uh, okay, listen, the, flavors, the flavors are muted. I I thought this was a Belgian quad. Obviously I'm wrong. It is not a Belgian quad because Untap says not. It says the Belgian strong hmm. dark. So it's compared to Rushford 8 and uh, Delirium Nocturne, both of which I thought were better beers than this. I'm not overly impressed by this, to be honest. Uh, it's not bad. It's I'm going to go 7.575 on both style and overall enjoyment. It's certainly not bad. I'm just not blown away. And I've certainly had... Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Oh God! All right, right. all right. Let's go over to Craig. I'm going over to Craig. Hey, Craig, what's your thoughts? Follow that up. 
Yeah, everything's getting better and better here. From, uh, the beer this is actually the Battle of Parkar Forest. It's <laughs> I, 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 I can't follow that up. Um, but uh, anyway, right, so what I'm again, uh, let's try and be kind of serious, I guess. Um, it's a quite a, um, a dark amber, sort of mahogany sort of colour. Um, so like what I put down for the aroma is like a light spice. Um, yeah, it's like... Brown sugar, very sweet, obviously. A little bit floral, um, getting that bubble gum, but only slightly. It's the same age bottle as, well, it's the 10th, yeah, of last year. So, yeah, 10, 10 24. Oh, wow. before, so, yeah. um, so it's little, there's little in the aroma of, of the ABV. Um, it's, it's kind of masked really well. Um, it's got that obviously that very kind of sweet candied sugar sort of aroma to it, but yeah, taste wise, yeah, I mean it's just straight up sweet uh, brown sugar, maybe a little bit of caramelized caramelized brown sugar, sort of um, blow torch sort of thing, um, sticky on the palate. Um, I I mean it's more of a sweet. Sticky kind of mouthfeel, I'd say overall. Um, again, no hint of the ABV. Not not really picking it up. The only kind of hint I'm getting to that is is a slight kind of a little bit on the you know the, the pity stomach. But apart from that, when it's you know you're drinking it, it's just like not at all. I think this, this, the whole malt and sweetness is just taking that over. I'd say um, it's not crazy, but but yeah, nice. Um, bit of white pepper. It's kind of a, a mild, sort of toasty, roasted malt kind of feel to the beer. Um, dark fruits, of course, like dates, plums, figs, that sort of thing. The bigger, uh, mm. rather than like, just normal raisins. Um, that's about it, really. There's not much else to really go on. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a very quaffable beer uh, for what it is. Nine percent. It's like it's silly dangerous. You, you, yeah. you, you know, your first one, you, first one, you can kind of think, "Oh, yeah, I'm going to session this," and, <laughs> and then and then you find that, then you find out you can't. Um, yeah, like I'm finding it right now. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to do uh, verticals of different uh, ages, like you're doing. Mm. Uh, but. Yeah, a bit like what Greg said. I, I, I think, I think these beers. I, I don't think they get any better from when they're fresh. Really, um, they might. If they, you might have less kind of booze, or they might be a little bit more smoother, maybe slightly creamier, potentially. Mm. Uh, but, but apart from that, I, you know, I think if you want that kind of more rounded Belgian in your face, bit of alcohol, a little bit, of course. Um, drink it fresh that's what i'd say but yeah a lovely beer um in terms of rating then i'm gonna give this um i'll give it an eight and a half for both style and enjoyment so yeah nice nice beer cheers cheers greg all right cool. so let's go over to me yay hey there uh, all right so yeah i'm quite enjoying these and 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 feeling it already um yeah, I and you know what? I'm actually going to agree with uh, Greg and Chris's assessment about uh, the beer as it ages. Like trying the 18 and the, and the 15 it doesn't necessarily get better. Yeah, who's Chris? It, was it Chris? Chris is washing his hair. You said I said Craig. I, was, I meant Craig and Greg. Oh, oh. Fuck sakes! Wow, you're it. drunk. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's he's there, Rook. Happy hump, happy. Happy hump right, day. At least I'm not getting humped by a dog. <laughs> all right. Um, he's got that red rock and he's just like. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to agree with the assessment that uh, that as it ages, doesn't necessarily like gets better. It gets a lot smoother. But as it gets better, it, it as it gets older, it's kind of it changes. But I'll get into that here in a second. So, getting off of the top of the uh, the fresh one here, I got a lot of there's in the in the aroma, it's a lot of like brown sugar and dark fruits, and. Um, in the flavor, it's it's more like like dark fruits. Like uh, I 
I guess I'll go with like the the the, the, the dark stone fruits, like 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 uh, Ashley was talking about. I get dates and raisins personally. A little bit of uh, this dusty cocoa note. I definitely see where you're coming from with the char part. Am um, I getting pepper? Uh, like a like either black pepper or uh, I'm getting cinnamon out of the finish as well as uh, as well as a touch of bubble gum uh, coming off of this one here. And in the finish, it's a nice this nice roasty. Dirt, dusty, earthy uh, kind of bitterness that lingers in the in the back. Um, the fresher is definitely much more robust, much more of a punch in the face with flow, all those complex flavors. As it ages, it becomes um, a much smoother, muted, dialed back, creamier and softer in consistency. Uh, the bubble gum is almost completely gone on the aged version, but it comes out more as as a like almost like a dark rum like in finish, uh, which is very nice in and of itself, but it's it's also much more muted. I mean, as far as this goes, like going for five years old, I feel like I like this better at five years old than I like this when I tried one at like three or four. Uh, it's just something, some reason it's it's gotten a little bit better in that time. So I might wait. I got one more bottle of this, I think, at this age, and I might hold on to that for a while longer uh, to see if it improves. But at the same time, um, yeah, it's one that in my experience, I like the 18 better. And the 15 is really nice. And you know what? You could also go on maybe in different years, slightly different. Uh, maybe a fresher. The 15 was not quite as good as the as the uh, the 18, but the 18 is a solid year. So, but either way, um, it is still today one of my favorite beers. Uh, I really do enjoy this. As far as the Belgian strong dark ale goes, this is one of the beers that I think of when I think of a strong a Belgian strong dark ale. I'm gonna give it for the style. I'm gonna give it a nine and a half. Uh, and overall enjoyment, still love it. Nine, nine and a half. Hey, yeah. Yeah. All right, there we go. All right, let's go back over here. She may be and good. This is accurate right here. Wednesday is hump day, according to Greg. Wednesday is hump day. Um, Red Beard, he was in the other room, but yeah, he's got no wit. And uh, oh, yeah, I'm not even gonna read that other one. So, what, yeah, I'm not, even, I'm not putting that one up there at all. It was a bleached wit, I'm sure, is what. Bleached, yeah, bleach. yeah, bleached. Bleached, yeah, yeah. bleached wit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I've yeah. done mine. I don't know about you guys. Mine's done. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working. Both on mine it. almost done. And and yeah, you know, right after uh, you know when uh, Craig was mentioning you, know, th this is a, a pretty sweet beer. It, it, it does come across, you know, very, very, very sweet. Um, not like uh, off-putting sweet, like I find a lot of like adjuncted beers can get or anything like that. But yeah, de definitely, you know, when they back sweetened it before bottle conditioning, it was uh, it definitely a sweet beer. Well, yep, yep, yep. Now, what's Nick, what's the uh, what's the Chimay White? What's that one? Triple. Is, is that a triple? That's yeah. a sink cell. The five hundred oh, cents, five hundred sears. It literally translates to translates it to five hundred. Yeah, I know. I can speak French. Oui? C'est bon. Bravo. Oui. Hey, Ashley, uh, I Ashley, pas français. Un petit peu. Ah oui, tu comprends pas comme mon Québécois? No, I don't speak that French. That French. <laughs> well, yeah, that, well, I only know that, four languages. You only know yeah, two. Yeah. yeah. That, you know four languages? Yeah, I do, actually. I know four languages. And gibberish doesn't count. No, 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 it's, 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 no it's, it's, actually, it's, I know four languages, uh, English, French, bad English, and bad French. No, I yeah. know most of it. I know most <laughs> of it. French. You say Bella Lugosi? I know French, German, uh, Portuguese, wow. Spanish. Oh, really? Uh, He's European. Uh, oh, you guys? Well, when I get drunk, I really understand Russians for some oh. reason. <laughs> don't, don't, don't we all? I mean, I know these languages. Oh, the Red Rocket, Red Rocket. <laughs> I understand languages better when I'm drunk. 
you're you're aware of their existence, Greg. You just <laughs> it's like it's not, I know that language. I just Greg, don't know it. Greg, uh, Greg understands yeah. that rocket. <laughs> Red Rocher. La rocket rouge. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Look at this. Oh, okay, man. dude, like seriously. Greg, when's your dog going to stop fucking your arm? What's that? Like, I said, when is your dog going to stop fucking your arm? When he puts pants on. <laughs> when he's what? When he's good and ready. Good ready. Wow. He definitely seems ready. He's double fisting. He's humping you again. At this point, he doesn't uh. know what he's doing. Despite the, despite the joke, he doesn't actually get a red rocket yet, so he doesn't quite know what he's doing. Uh, well, he knows the grab. Spank, 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 spank. Is he he's neutered yet or no? No, he's too young to be neutered. He's not supposed to be oh. neutered until a year. What? Why? Why would you neuter him in the first place? I'm so shit out straight. My wife can't wait to cut his nuts off. Oh uh, well. All right. Yeah. Let's see a second doing the math. Here. Wow. All right. <laughs> I got. I'm gonna have to watch that. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's getting played. That, that's 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 that is definitely yeah, gonna get gift. That is getting gift probably tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my arm's pregnant, so. Oh, that's oh, gross. accurate. The baby's gonna look like Nick. Oh, it'll be so cute. I have a little mustache. Shut up, Greg. Too. Oh, okay. shut, shut up. Greg. <clears throat> okay, He's I back. need to recheck my math. Oh, uh, there you go. Ah! He, he was born with a camera in his hand. Who me? All right. <laughs> no, uh, Greg's child. <laughs> child. Born with a video camera in his hand, or maybe, maybe maybe you maybe you were born with a camera already in your hand. <laughs> maybe he was born with it. I know. I was maybe born it's Maybelline. Oh, like like the yeah. other time. Uh, maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's Vaseline. Vaseline. Yeah. 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 All right. Ah, that's more. That's more. Makes more sense. Vaseline. Okay. So. Nine nine five seven five eight five nine five. Yeah, all right. I, I, I. drink more of it, it's like you know, I, it's like Red Rocket. You know, it's robust. <laughs> it's like Elon <laughs> Musk or something. It's just Elon Musk. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Elon Musk. I'm going to do something that is good that the whole world's going to uh, appreciate and something for the whole world. Put my car into space. Which he did do. Yeah. All right. So there's well, your final it. scores. Ooh, that did that really well. Score. It's no, uh, oh, what, what was it? Roche for 10. I think that's still the highest rated beer we've done. Maybe that's Solstice. Oh, that's right. We did do solstice. That was a good beer. Yeah, that was a tasty beer. Too bad we did that. It's like in like a Saturday night, uh, like spur of the moment episode, and it ended up being one of our best beers. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I didn't review that with you guys. Yeah, I think you were uh, doing stuff with family and couldn't join or yeah. something. Yeah, I was doing more important things. Yeah, right. More important. <laughs> yeah, don't you wish you murdered them now so you didn't have to deal with them? <laughs> All right, yeah. So eight five eight eight for style and eight four overall. That's pretty sure. solid. That's pretty solid ratings for a beer. We don't. No. We don't just throw stuff. around these ratings. Oh. So sorry. Take this pretty seriously. Yeah, with all the the dogs humping and the radar belching. And... Well, only three times. We're a fucking classy group. Yeah. All right. We're, uh, we're... There are no new comments except for Greg Nobody's... saying, I prefer five year old beers. Yeah, I thought we weren't going to read that. <laughs> well, I, thought uh, I, 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 I thought you were going to stop right there. I love five year olds. <laughs> I, I thought we weren't going to read that comment. Well, you, you did drink a five year old beer. 
Well, I did drink gas, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's accurate. The it's, yeah, yeah, that, like, that was only your that was only your mind that added the children part. Hey Lee. All right. You still have to be watching. What's the what what's the question, buddy? What's the question? Red beard. What's the question? Come on. All right. We got four viewers. Come on. Get hump. Okay, we need the uh, final question. If not, I mean, where's that good? What's next week's hump beer? Next week's oh, yeah. day beer. Labatt Blue. Very good, Labatt Blue. We should do Molson Fireside at some point, though. You know, I, I had for the first time a couple of weeks ago a uh, chorus banquet. Oh, yeah. I was, I was actually surprised. That was actually the very first episode of BA 101 when it was oh, still on least I've had, I've had, I've had it, 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 It's still surprised. horrible. But... Did we do a chorus banquet? I've, yeah, we I've did. It was, the, it was the first episode. How was long it ago was that? Was it sh sh do, you get, oh. do you guys get slits like, in Canada? Slits? Yeah, we can shit. Get, get the shits. Yeah. <laughs> From I, yeah. I don't get slits <laughs> here, or but I need beer. <laughs> I think you get you guys, do you guys yeah. get slits <laughs> in Ontario? Yeah, I've seen uh, that. I'm not sure. Hang on. I don't, I don't go to the beer store, but I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they, they come in no. 40s. I'm, oh, well, we don't. I'm just that's saying. A that's a malt liquor, right? I was, I was, I was curious. So, anyway. You want um, I just I, I can you one. I, okay, so since the question has been asked now, uh, Lee has actually you know put us out of misery and said, "What's next week's beer?" We are technically not doing a beer next week. We're going to do a bring your own beer analysis one hundred and one, and this time we're actually going to do bring your own barrel aged beers. So, are, are you showing us what uh, you're bringing already? Well, I maybe I might be bringing that one. I, I didn't flash along. Either way, we're gonna do a barrel aged beers. So it's gonna be my fucking fortieth birthday next week. So fuck it. I'm Are you I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm around. Yeah. I'm around. Well, I'm around. happy birthday! Yeah, uh, it's not till next weekend. Well, still, happy it's not, not this weekend, but next weekend. So, but it's gonna be my yeah. I want to fuck it. I'm picking the beer, and I want to do barrel aged beers because I fucking love barrel aged beers. Huh. Nice. So bring your bring whatever barrel age you can get. I'm pretty sure I know Greg yeah. can get a barrel aged beer. A barrel aged who can't beer. get a barrel aged beer? Um, I'm pretty sure I'll buy one. I can get one easy. Yep. I'm, and, um, and, uh, Ashley, I'm, I'm around. One, I'm around so. Yeah, I'm, I'll be around for I, the after chat as well. So. Cool. All right, sweet. And I know Redbeard can get a. He's got a barrel aged beer he can bring. I think he got one from Highlander. He's gonna like. Pimple. Uh, yeah, there's the Highlander, Highlander one. one. What was the other one? There was the full beer gave him some barrel aged stuff too, I think. Did they put stuff in barrels? I think so. Wasn't that didn't they didn't they release a barrel aged Imperial Stout or something that Greg was uh, that uh, Red Beer was going all about? They sent him a couple of bottles. Probably going dog over know. it. That all right, like right, free right. advertising for them. Yeah, well, that why do you think they give him all the free oh. shit? Oh. <laughs> I'll bring a nice oh. barrel aged Pilsner. It'll be barrel aged Pilsner. <laughs> I'm going to bring a barrel aged Goza. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can change I'll it up. Try gonna... find, I'll try and find a barrel aged beer. I haven't got any, I don't think, at the moment. They're easy. Well, they're getting easier to find these days to find something barrel aged. Oh, yeah. Even if you, and it's open for interpretation. So if you want to go get cop out and get a, like an innocent gun to get the barrel aged, like aged on oak staves or something. Staves. Fine. Or, or Jim <laughs> Beam's dark. Copper logger is uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. copper logger from Budweiser. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I you know may what? do that. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> I might get a copper logger. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might just pour a little bit of uh, something in the in the beer or something. I will yeah, say. there you go. Why not? <laughs> bit of All, right. All right, let's get to the after chat. All right, let's do the after chat shit. We're gonna come back online with the after chat here in a moment. Want to thank everybody for watching. Got uh, Redbeard and Lee in the chat. I haven't seen uh, Eric Gilbert, but uh, and Jamie, or if, if Jamie's watching the replay, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks everybody for coming on. We got Radar, we got Ashley, we've got Greg, and we got Craig. Thanks for watching. Bye. Talk to you guys in a bit. Happy Hump Day. Red Rocket. Happy Hump. <laughs>